Okay, class, hopefully you can hear me and this video is reasonably easy to follow. So, notes for 318. Of course, Monday we didn't make it because it was a little bit of mayhem trying to scurry about and get the new mode of communication set up. But that said, uh, Let's let's look at some of these notes today, right? We're still working with antennas. Hopefully we can push through this and, and maybe do a little bit more with specific types of antennas and uh, run a couple of homeworks on that. And then we should be ready to uh, quiz out on this material. How we're going to handle that remains to be seen. Uh, anyway, some sort of take home or obviously take home and then you have you know a certain amount of time to complete the examination and then turn it in via email that's sort of what everyone around here is thinking but uh let's postpone further discussion on that for now and uh just go through this uh little set of notes that we have for today all right recall the last thing we did was uh look at the freeze transmission equation right kind of develop that before we took off for spring break and uh before the serious interruption from the virus so in any rate uh following these notes and again those will be put out on the engineering ftp site pretty soon kind of business as usual i provide the notes and then we go over those notes in class and and uh, then there's some sort of homework that's related to those notes and and you work that homework and, and turn that in. And uh, so again, that homework, since this is Wednesday, that homework would be due next Monday. So again, I may put the solution out and just ask you to compare your solution to mine and send me an email to verify that indeed the two are the same. And that way I can give you credit for it without too much, you know, transmitting files and printing stuff ad nauseum. I'm sort of trying to avoid that. Okay, so right here's our freeze transmission equation shown here. What are these parameters? Recall, they're all defined down here. I tried to do that so you could follow these notes easily. Right, this is ultimately the power delivered to the receiving antenna load, right? Uh, P is the polarization mismatch factor. We've talked about that before, right? Transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna don't necessarily have the same polarization state. And so because of that, you're, you're going to lose some, some possibly lose some power, right? And so our polarization mismatch factor, which we've addressed before, is a number between 0 and 1. And so you just dot the polarization unit vector of your, of your wave radiated by your transmitting antenna to the conjugate of the polarization unit vector associated with the wave uh, radiated by the receiving antenna if it happened to be a a radiating, radiating uh, antenna, right? The conjugate flips it around and makes it a receiving antenna. So the magnitude of that squared, right? That gives us P. Uh, Q is the impedance mismatch factor. We're going to discuss that in a little bit greater detail momentarily through an example. So that's just simply the actual power delivered to the load uh, on the receiving on the receive side of the system divided by the ideal amount of power, the maximum amount of power that the receive antenna could deliver to the load. Okay, so we'll, again, number between zero and one, we'll work through that and, and that turns out to be pretty straightforward concept, right? This takes into account the fact that the load impedance is not necessarily, on the receive side, is not necessarily the complex conjugate of the antenna's impedance. Right, P sub T, power transmitted by the transmitting antenna, G sub T, gain of the transmit, G sub R, gain of the receiving antenna, wavelength, right, obviously, ratio of the speed of light to frequency of operation. R is the distance between the transmitter and the receiver, right, and that goes as the square, so the power received or the power deliver, delivered falls off inversely proportional to the square of the distance away, right? That's that, right? That's the wave radiated by the 
transmitting antenna is being spread out over a sphere, right? And so that power density is falling off like uh, inversely proportional to the area of a sphere. The area of a sphere goes like R squared. So that's why that is the way that it is. Okay, so these things are almost always, uh, you know, best represented uh, with an example, right? So again, these notes are out there. You can pick those up. I'm just working my way through these notes for you and with you. So let's look at an example, right? So we can put something similar to this on the antennas exam, like typical, so-called typical free transmission equation. Right, so here's our source over here. We're just kind of making this thing up. 10 volts RMS and uh, 50 ohm internal impedance. So the combination of these two things, as usual, represents our generator, right? And so that is then right, connected to this transmission line, 50 ohm lossless transmission line, which in turn is connected to our transmitting antenna. Okay, so we're going to let these antennas, both on the transmit and receive side, be uh, resonant half-wave dipoles, right? So for resonant, we mean that the the input impedance is real, right? Turns out that it's 70 ohms, and the uh, imaginary part of the antenna's impedance is zero. That's what we mean by resonance. And we're just going to let, for fun, the distance between the terminals of the generator and the transmitting antenna be some odd number of quarter wavelength, right? That that makes computing the input impedance uh, at the generator terminals uh, straightforward, right? Whenever the transmission line is an odd number of quarter wavelengths long, the input impedance here will be the load impedance, uh, rather the characteristic impedance squared divided by the load impedance. And the load impedance is just whatever we see looking into this terminal, uh, the terminals of this antenna, right? So we emphasize here, right, that the beauty of the theory, right, is that we can we can replace the antenna with a simple impedance, and then we're doing circuit theory, right? So the the concept that the antenna can be represented as an impedance, uh, you know, the, the importance of that concept should not be uh, can't be overemphasized, so be conscious of that. We'll just pick uh, one gig, right, for our operating frequency. Right, remember a gig always has a 30 centimeter wavelength, or 0.3 meters. So two gig will have a 15 centimeter wavelength, etc. Okay, so 10 miles away, right, we have a receive antenna. It's also an identical dipole, resonant dipole, right? And it's terminated in 500 ohms, right? Ideally, we'd like to terminate it in 70 ohms, right? Because that's the internal impedance of this receive antenna. This receive antenna is modeled as some open circuit uh, antenna voltage in series with the antenna impedance. And the antenna, the receive antenna impedance, just like over here, is 70 ohms. So Right. So this if this were 70 ohms, that would be the ideal circumstances. But unfortunately, it's terminated in 500 ohms. And so this load, the 500 ohm load won't absorb as much power as a 70 ohm load would. Right. Because the 70 ohm load would then represent a load that is the conjugate of the antennas and Okay, so all of these general ideas are. are are here in this first first slide. Okay, let's move on to the second slide. All right, I'm practicing with this. So hopefully, this comes across reasonably clearly. All right. So this thing is going to ultimately be, I think, an AVI file. All right. And so I'm going to try to put it out on the engineering FTP site. After I record this, I'm going to do. I'm going to test it, put it out on the engineering FTP site for us, and then hopefully you should be able to click on it and it opens up and, and plays and you can do whatever you want to do with it. Right. 
print it out, feed it to your dog. All right, here we go. All right. So the input and feed is going to be with 70 ohms, right? 70 plus J0. And the halfway dipole, right, the reason people use it so much is, it, is because it's extremely efficient. In other words, almost all of the power fed into the terminals of the of the resonant antenna is radiated into space. Very little of it is lost as I squared R losses on the antenna. So what we're going to do is just assume that its radiation efficiency is unity, right? That makes its gain equal to its directivity, right? So the gain is the is always the radiation efficiency times the directivity, right? So if the two are the same, that just means the radiation efficiency is one. Or there are no ohm, we're assuming that there are no ohmic losses. Surely there is, there are in, in this case some ohmic losses, but they're so small compared to the uh, radiation, the amount of power radiated, that uh, we can just assume that the radiation efficiency is, for all intents and purposes, unity. Okay, so uh, transmission line on the on the transmit side sees sees a 70 ohm load, just as we said. So the generator on the transmit side, because it's an odd number of quarter wavelengths long, it's going to see Z naught squared over Z load or 50 squared over 70 or about 36 ohm. Since it's the uh, and this is true, right? Because the input impedance of a quarter wavelength line that is an odd number of wavelengths long is Z naught squared over Z load. That's where that came from. We've seen that before on the last exam when we were talking about uh, a chunk of dielectric in a waveguide. Same kind of an idea. Z naught squared over Z load. Transmission line theory from EMAG1. Very important. Right? You've got to grasp these ideas. And so here's our circuit, right? Here is the generator, right? right? 10 volts RMS in series with 50 ohms. And then it sees 35.7 ohms looking into the transmission line, which is subsequently connected to the transmit antenna, right? So whatever power this absorbs is the same amount of power radiated into space by the transmitting antenna since the transmitting antenna is 100% efficient, right? So here I compute the current, 10 divided by 50 plus 35.7, square that and multiply by the resistance. And that gives me the power transmitted, which is about a half a watt, right? 0.486 watts, assuming I did the arithmetic correctly. I remember, push this up. Okay. Therefore, the transmit antenna radiates about a half watt into space. Since the transmitting and receiving antenna is the same, right? We know that G sub T is G sub R, right? And that's 1.64. We had that in that exercise you just completed. And, uh, right, we're assuming that the radiation efficiency is unity, so the gain and directivity are identical. That, that's what allowed us to make this statement. P is 1, right, polarization mismatch factor. Since the transmit and receive antennas are aligned, here, transmit antenna, receive antenna, they're aligned. That would be P of 0. This is a P of 1, right? That number just is 1. Right, 10 miles, we've got to convert that into meters, 16,090 meters, 1.609 kilometers per mile, wavelength 0.3 meters or 30 centimeters. Okay, so now, right, we need to work, uh, now we need to work the receive side, right? Recall what I said earlier, right? So V antenna in series with Z antenna, that models the receive antenna, right? This is the open circuit voltage of the receive antenna. This is the internal impedance of the receive antenna. It's connected to 500 ohms. So this is the actual scenario. This is the ideal case, right? This is the case where maximum power is delivered to the load. And so this factor Q, impedance mismatch factor, is going to be the ratio of the power delivered in the actual case to the 500 ohm divided by the power delivered to the 70 ohm, right? So, right, this is P actual, P ideal. Take the ratio, go through the arithmetic, 
I get 0 0.431, right? So only 43.1% of the power uh, available from the receive antenna, the generator, is delivered to the 500 ohm load, right? If this were 70 ohms, then all of it would be, and then Q would go to one. Okay, moving on, moving on. Page three. Let's get this knocked out. So now we're ready, right? Power delivered, right? Free transmission equation. Right? Power delivered is P Q. Computed both of those. Power transmitted, we computed those. We got we know the gain of the transmit and the receive, which are identical. We know the operating wavelength, and we know the distance between the transmitter and the receiver. The power delivered should be the voltage squared across the 500 ohm load divided by 500 ohms, right? V squared over R. And that's an RMS value, RMS value. So then ultimately here, I can solve for the voltage across the 500 ohm load, right? That's the objective. I guess I should have stated that a little more clearly at the, at the outset. But right, in this case, we know that the we know that the uh, transmitting volt voltage uh, is ten volts. We're trying to figure out what the load voltage is. So essentially, we're doing a circuit, right? We're working a circuit problem. The circuit is a funny circuit. It's got antennas in it. Right? So we have to use steel to get the answer, right? So just fill in the blank, VX squared over 500, P1, Q, 0.431, power transmitted, half a watt, gain of the receiving, uh, transmitted the same, 1.64 squared. We proved that. Arduous mathematics required to do so, but we did prove it. Lambda 0.3 squared, 4 pi times 16,090 meters squared. That gives us about one and a quarter uh, femtowatts, right? So then we uh, are now able to solve for V sub X, right? computed that number, gives us about 25 microvolts RMS, okay? So the power delivered would be that voltage squared divided by 500 or about uh, one point, uh, about one and a quarter uh, uh, is that milliwatts? Yeah, watt. Yeah, milliwatts. Yeah, sorry, milliwatts. Right. So, one point two four nano milliwatts, I guess. <laughs> and so the power delivered is uh, right in dB would be ten log of that, and so that's minus eighty nine dBm. Right. DB relative to a milliwatt. So that would be the normal way that that would be represented. Obviously, I didn't push this down, so I have to bear with me. Let me roll it up, or I could zoom out, I guess. Okay, the notes are online, so you can follow it there. So. Okay, let's let's push this thing a little further, right? We're getting to the end of it here. And so Let's see if we can go ahead and use the concept of effective aperture to determine the field strength, the electric field strength just in front of the receive antenna. All right. So this this becomes important whenever you're trying to measure field strength, right? The FCC requires that the field strength, a certain meaning the electric field strength at a certain distance from a radiating antenna at certain frequencies be equal to or below a certain number, right? So that you don't interfere with other receipt with other stations. So this thing whole thing can be kind of viewed, this part of the problem can be viewed as a as a field strength meter type problem or a field strength measurement type problem. Okay, so let's go through it. Power delivered again it's PQ times the power received and the PQ so the power received is the watts per square meter 
incident on the receive antenna times the receive antenna's uh, effective aperture, right? Watts per square meter times meter squared is watts. But we can replace this receive aperture, uh, effective aperture of the receive antenna in terms of the gain. We can write it in terms of the gain of the receive antenna, since that's what we know, and the wavelength and this constant right here, right? So this is just four pi times the gain, I'm sorry, lambda squared times the gain divided by four pi. And so that's the power delivered is, right, again, V load squared over R load. And so, you know, here I can now solve for the electric field strength of the wave. And this is going to be right in front of the receive antenna, right? That's where that E is measured. So then I can compute E given the algebra, right? And I get about 304 microvolts per meter. Okay. All right. So we're, we're near the end of it. So here's, uh, right, homework uh, number 18. So this is just sort of a practice to see if we can get this uh, video working properly and reasonably straightforward to follow and digest. So here's a little problem for you. Cell, a cellular telephone base station, right? Transmitter 850 megahertz, delivers 20 watts into a 10 dB gain antenna, compute the power in uh, watts available from a 3 dB gain mobile receiving antenna inside your cell phone, right? 20 kilometers away, assuming free space uh, propagation condition. So here, right, we're assuming P and Q are one, right? So go ahead and assume P equals Q equals one. All right, see if you can uh, compute that. That's pretty straightforward. Straightforward. Just kind of get you uh, up to speed, right? All right, so as the week unfolds, I guess Friday, what we'll do, or tomorrow, if I get to it earlier, we'll, we'll look into uh, different types of antennas, right? And we want to do a little bit with arrays as well. So uh, we'll take and look at patch antennas and uh, that's an interesting one, and a, a couple of others maybe, and then talk about arrays of antennas and how maybe to compute the pattern of arrays of antennas. You know, the beauty of arrays, you can adjust the phase of the elements relative to one another and steer the beam in space. So we'll do a little bit of that. And that'll kind of wrap this uh, antennas material up, and then we'll move toward an exam, as I mentioned earlier. All right, let's see how this turns out. Have a good day. Stay well.